Because of the D9 ambassadors on their way to the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. So we want to thank them for all of the work that they've been doing over the course of these last several years. Uh, and uh, as we're, um, as you all have been listening, you should have heard a little music from Stevie Wonder. Can you feel uh, from Stevie Wonder? And can you feel it? Or there should have been a display of, of an ad from Angela Also Brooks, a mobilized link, some campaign locations, and there'll be a QR code for polling location signups and get out the vote. So we're again excited to have you. And what I'd like to do at this point is turn it over to the chair of the African American DLC, Jeremiah Pope. Thank you, Dr. Dukes. You you have me so fired up this evening. <laughs> I'm glad to be on. As, as Dr. Dukes stated, my name is Jeremiah Pope. I'm the chair of the African American Leadership Council. Um, <clears throat> the African American Leadership Council um, sole job is to energize activists through the, throughout the state, regardless if you are from the DMV area or the Eastern Shore. We need as many people to turn out to vote. Um, we need people to help register voters, amplify the Democratic message, engage with members of the diverse African-American communities, and supplement the coordinated campaign to turn out Democratic voters throughout Maryland. In non-competitive cycles, the African-American Diversity Leadership Council is responsible, is responsible for increasing inclusiveness, capacity building, voter education, and empowerment of Maryland's diverse communities. I don't have to say much because as, D, as D9 ambassadors, this is what we do. We always get out, we register people to vote, we always stay fired up. And as Michelle Obama says, we always do something. So please sign up uh, to my right at the QR code scan. I need people out here. I need people in the streets with me. So I wanna pass it off. Uh, I wanna also note, that we do have another event coming up this, this weekend on Sunday, October the 6th at 7.30 p.m. It's the Black Marylanders for Kamala and Angela event. Please show up to that as well. I want to pass it off to my ice cold brother, Lamont. Ah, thank you, good brother Jeremiah. Good evening, D9 ambassadors, D9 family, elected officials, and the Maryland Democratic Party. My name is Lamont Rowley, and it is an honor to be with a powerhouse of unity, history, and undeniable influence. Together, we have not just witnessed change, we've driven it. From our earliest days, our organizations have shaped the political landscape of this country time and time again. And now, once again, we're called to rise in the spirit of service in the name of justice and for the candidate who embodies our values, Angela also Brooks. Let's be, kid, let's be clear, the stakes couldn't be any higher. This is not just about checking a box on a ballot, it's about voting for the future we deserve, a future that understands our struggles and is unafraid to take them head on. Angela also Brooks is not just another candidate, She's a proven leader. Her record speaks for itself and her vision is the blueprint for the thriving future we all want. Come on, D9 family. We're not new to this. We've seen our collective power time and time again. Remember, we had a, deep, we had a, a divine nine brother who started to run for governor of Maryland with just 1% name recognition. But what happened? We happened, the Divine Nine, our network family, friends, and neighbors became a mobilizing force through challenges, including the height of COVID-19. We elevated his name, his story, his vision, all across the state of Maryland. And, we're going to do it again. The power of the divine nine is unmatched. When we stand united, we are not spectators. We are the mobilizers. We are the organizers. 
We are the doers. Now it's our time to activate and to ensure that Angela vision becomes a reality. But let me remind you, votes just don't fall from the sky. We have to go out and claim every one of them. Every phone call, every text, every social media post, every door knock counts. Divine Nine family, it's on us to inspire our circles, to make their voices heard. We've organized for civil rights, for justice, for equality, and now we must mobilize for Angela Also Brooks. So I challenge each and every one of you, make it your personal mission to turn out five new voters, then 10, then 20. Sign up to cover election polls across the state. Sign up to hold signs in your community intersections. Sign up to phone bank from the campaign offices across the state or from the comfort of your home. Let's not talk about change. Let's be the change. Our legacy demands it. Our future depends on it. Together, we will win. Together, we will make sure that Angela Also Brooks is the next chapter in our history of progress and power. Her vision is our vision. Her fight is our fight. Divine Nine, let's go get it done. Get out the vote for Angela Also Brooks. Thank you. Now I'm gonna pass it on to Deja, my Divine Nine sister from Delta Sigma Theta, Sorority Incorporated. Good evening, everyone. My name is Deja Scott. I am the digital director of the Maryland Democratic Party, and I've come to share some social media engagement strategies with you so that we can get out the vote, get people energized for Kamala and Angela, and lead the cause in getting people energized for Kamala and Angela. So what we've created for you all are different Divine Nine um, themed frames for you to utilize on your social media accounts, and we made them based on the colors of different organizations in the Divine Nine. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through how to upload these um, on your own personal social media. And so if you scan the QR code, we have a Canva that you can make a copy of. And I have the instructions here. And after the Zoom, we also will share the instructions or the, the slideshow with you all so that you can access it on your own. Um, so the first thing that you would do after scanning the QR code, well, first you're going to scan the QR code. Um, you can do this on your phone. Um, and if not, I can also send the link directly. If you um, don't know how to use QR codes, I can make sure that when we send out the slideshow, we have the link directly to the Canva as well. Um, so we can scan the QR code first. And then in the Canva interface, you want to upload the image that you want to use for your frame. Um, there's going to be actually, well, I'm going to just talk about it while I'm going through. So there's going to be a button on the left-hand side that says upload. And once you um, click the upload button, you can select the image on your desktop or in your downloads to upload to Canva. It's very, very simple. Once you upload it, you drag it. So it's going to be on the left-hand side of your screen. You just drag it and drop it in the center where you see the frame at in the middle. And once you do that, your picture will automatically adjust. Um, if it doesn't look if the configuration does not look correct, all you have to do is double click the center of the frame and it'll allow you to move the picture accordingly to how you want it to fit. In order to download the image um, and to upload it to your social media account, on the right hand side of your screen, you will see a share button at the top right corner and you will click the share button and then you will see a drop down menu that it will say either PNG, PDF, um, MP4, it will, it will give you a plethora of options, but we're going to select the PNG option. And under the PNG option, you're going to see three different checkboxes. And one of those checkboxes says transparent background. When you select the transparent background, it allows you to upload it for your Instagram and Facebook as, um, as our Instagram and Facebook profiles have circles and it automatically would fit into your social media. So you want to upload it as a transparent background. I'm um, downloaded, I'm sorry, as a transparent background file and then save it to either your downloads or desktops or wherever you feel comfortable and that you'll be able to find it. If you have any questions, I will be putting my email in the chat and you can email me um, if you need any assistance uploading your image. All right, and 
Next, I am going to pass it to Reverend Regina Clay and Barbara Streeter, who are going to talk about the faith community. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. We are fired up and ready to go, are we not? We are fired up and ready to go. And my name is Reverend Regina Clay, and we are just excited in the faith community. And what is so important in the faith community is we have been educating because our faith leaders sometimes get inhibited about talking about elections, but you can talk about voting all day without talking about which candidate you may be voting for. And so we have been educating faith leaders across the state um, around that. And we have been sharing with them to have an operation voter turnout, meaning have an action plan. I'm just gonna share a quick story and I'm gonna turn it over to Barbara Streeter. What I will say to you, is that my daughter goes to Howard University and she is a part of the Divine Nine and she um, has been mobilizing on her campus. I have already told her that she will be coming early voting. I will be picking her up, taking her to the polls. My mother and father, 90 and 87, my mother came in the house the other day and she said, I have my mail-in ballot. Do you have yours talking to my father? Then I followed up with my father and said, do you... What, did you ask for your mail-in ballot, Dad? He said, no, I want an early vote. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about a plan of action. That goes from your family to your friends to your neighbors. What is your plan of action? October 27th is souls to the polls. And we know that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So we speak it into existence. I'll turn it over to Barbara Streeter. Hello everyone, this is a pleasure to be with my D9 fellow ambassadors as I represent the pink and the green. I do serve as faith as the faith outreach director for Angela Also Brooks and it has been an honor since November traveling across the state of Maryland, worshiping and visiting with so many churches, various de denominations of faith. We've probably reached over 100 pastors and it has been a great opportunity. Most recently we met with about 125 people for a statewide faith meeting. And what I want to share with you all, knowing and working with Angela personally, and professionally, what you see and who you see is exactly the same woman that will be representing the Senate. The same woman that can sit down and have conversations with the seniors, but also are able to hold a baby and be able to pray with someone as well. She moves in the, she moves in the focus of her prayer life. But I also want to share this. Many of the leaders on this call today are leaders in your churches, in your mosques, in your various faith. And we want you to use your voice. Your voice matters. Your voice matters whether or not it's through your ministries or where, whether or not you are speaking in different capacities. One of the acronyms that we are using, we're saying PUSH. The P is for pray. We need you to be praying. Let's be very honest. Your prayers matters in order for us to continue to move forward. Pray in terms of making sure she gets the rest that she needs for Angela and Kamala. We need you to unify it with one voice. If you hear something out here that doesn't sound right, say something. We need you to speak. Speak their names when they're in rooms that they cannot walk in. We cannot get to every church in the state of Maryland over the next four Sundays. That means we need you to speak on our behalf, on their behalf, on Angela and Kamala's behalf. And the H and push is to help. That help means donation. That help means your time. That help means polling station. That help means on election day. Let's bring the nine people for Divine Nine to the polls. We can do this, but we have to unify and do this together. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks to all of our speakers uh, thus far. And you know, I wanna remind us of a couple of things tonight. One is I've already said it, that we can't get twisted about what our mission is. And as, as Lamont talked about, get out the vote, the kinds of things that as, that as people of color, that we're so used to doing when we think about our fight for social justice, for equity, for equality. What I say is we're not new to this. We're true to this thing called social action. We need to advocate, agitate, and activate over the course of these next 30 plus days. 
because we know the outcome that not just the outcome that we're looking for, but the outcome that we are destined to get. You know, what I always think about is the late, certainly great Shirley Chisholm. She said, if you don't have a seat already at the table, take your folding chair. So what we're asking you to do as you are out and about across the state of Maryland is make sure you have your folding chair. It can actually be a chair if you're sitting on the corners waving signs. It can be a, a chair that's in your mind as you think about how you educate voters about what they should be thinking about relative to this election. Democracy is on the line. Reproductive health is on the line. Freedom is on the line. Education is on the line. We could go on and on and on. And you're going to hear from some of our elected officials in, in just a, a little while with regard to what they think about all of this and how they have leaned in and their respective positions, and most importantly, with their commitment to the candidates that we want to elect for office. So what we're going to do, we are um, waiting for one of our special guests, and uh, as soon as she gets on, we're going to take a pause. But what I'd like to do is ask a question or two of some of the elected officials who are with us this evening. And if I could, now you know that... Um, uh, things don't always go the way that we want to, that at, at 744, someone's supposed to be on, but she may be busy doing the work of uh, campaigning right now. And then as soon as uh, uh, County Executive Angela also Brooks gets on the call, we're going to take a pause in our questions in our chat and we'll come, we'll take uh, uh, the County Executive and then we'll go back to uh, questions and answers. But what I would like to ask is, and I know that we have County Executive Calvin Ball is on the line. Am I correct? Yes, I see you. Thank I'm you. I'm here. Uh, absolutely. And thank you so much. And I have a question for you, given the role that you have, is given the current political and social climate, why is it essential for members of the Divine Nine organizations to engage in social action in our communities? Well, County Executive Alston Brooks and I are the only currently serving Black County Executives in the entire state of Maryland. And our Divine Nine can demonstrate our passion through our power. And our power is in empowering others, giving others a voice so that our voice can be heard. And so when the Divine Nine, organizations of service and leadership for many, many decades can come together, we make sure that we give voice not only to our members, but to current and future generations. Thank you, thank you for that. And Delegate Wilkins, why don't you answer the same question as you think about the pink and green? What does, what does social action mean and how do you activate that? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. Good evening. So glad to be here. I'm Delegate Janelle Wilkins, Chair of the Legislative Black Caucus of Maryland and proud member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I am speaking tonight in my personal capacity and my views don't represent either of those organizations. And when it comes to social action, no matter what organization we're all here repping and proud members of, we have a deep deep history, a shared history of activism, of calling out for change, of voter registration and being at the table. We've come a long way since 1908, since 1906, since 1913, but we have a long way to go. And when you look at the state of Maryland, the moment that we are in with black leadership, having the largest black caucus in the country, the first black governor, a woman, an African-American speaker of the house, that comes because of that advocacy and that voice. And we make an impact with policy based on the people that we represent. So I'm excited to be here to support two members of the Divine Nine, who are going for the highest offices in the land, President of the United States, and also our next U.S. Senator from Maryland, and very proud to be joined by several colleagues all across the state as well. Well, thank you so much. And as they say, uh, we have breaking news, breaking news. And uh, we've been joined by a very special guest, and I'm going to ask Joy Russell if she'll come on and introduce our special guest. 
Thank you, Sora Dukes. Let me see. I'm having a little bit of technical difficulty. You know how this goes. Well, it doesn't uh, look like it. We can see you. You can see me. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight and um, you know signing up to be part of this historic moment. I am Joy Arnold Russell, and I'm here to introduce you to Angela also Brooks tonight. Some of you probably for the first time, although um, I'm sure many of you all know her well. But please indulge me for a second because I just want to walk you through a little bit of her history. Um, so I've known Angela since 1993 when we met at the University of Maryland Law School. And after law school, we both spent years as public servants, me in the District of Columbia and Angela in Prince George's County. Um, in 19, 20, I'm sorry, in 2010, <laughs> Angela launched her campaign for state's attorney. And I remember attending her first fundraiser pregnant with my first child. Um, she was relatively unknown at that race. You know, she was the underdog, but she, she put in the work. She spent time getting to know the residents of the county and she emerged as a winner that year, having beat all of the favorites. You know, she, hard, she fought hard and she won. In 2018, after two successful terms as state's attorney, she launched her campaign for county executive and I was her campaign manager. She asked me to sign up and lead the team knowing that I had a six month old baby at home. But what she said and what she'll tell you is she challenged me at that moment and she told me to put the baby in the stroller, get out there on the, on the trail with her and help the team win. Um, and that was probably my first time realizing how hard it was to say, say no to Angela. Um, she worked hard in that race also. She continued to take her message to the people and really hear from them and what they needed from the county executive at that time. She fought hard in that race and she won that one too. What most of you all are probably familiar with is that in the spring of 2023, she launched her campaign to be the first United, uh, to be the United, next United States Senator from the state of Maryland. And you guys know this story in the primary, she ran against a sitting congressman with $80 million to throw into the race. And that's what he did. You know, let that sink in, $80 million. Um, most people didn't think she had a chance, but she took her message to the people. She worked hard. And as you know, she won that race too. Angela is a child of God, a mother, a daughter, a sister, and a friend to so many. She's a tough fighter. She speaks truth to power and will never stop fighting for you or for us. She's the prototype of the exact type of person that you would want online with you. She'd have your front, she'd have your back. She'd lift up the entire line with hope and laughter as you all worked in the trenches together. And again, this is, I'm speaking to someone who's been in these trenches with Angela for a very long time. She's the real deal, okay? She's here for us, she gets us, and she will fight for all of us. So I just wanna thank you again for taking the time to, to join us tonight. Without further ado, I wanna introduce you to my boss, my friend, my girl, and my soror, Angela Olson Brooks. Oh my goodness, how could that be any more um, beautiful? Thank you so much, Joy. And I, I think that um, her introduction, I wanna thank her, I wanna thank uh, Sora Dukes, Dr. Dukes, who I, I, I just love and respect so much, um, to, uh, to Lamont Riley, um, who I've learned others affectionately refer to as Lamont. Um, I, for the longest time, didn't know who, um, uh, who they call Reggie. I didn't know who Reggie was for the longest time, but I, I now know uh, he's known by so many. I also want to thank the, uh, the Democratic Party uh, for putting together tonight's um, uh, program for all of us and to thank all of you all so much for, uh, for signing on tonight. Um, Joy's introduction and the expressions that she made about our history together, I think signifies in so many ways what it is all of us share. Um, D9 and our relationships are just so important. Um, I think that that these relationships, we all understand the kind of collective history that we share um, and the mission, the collective mission in so many ways that, that we have all um, adopted together. And that is that we believe in, in not only um, freedom, but we believe that every successive generation should do better than the one before it. Uh, we have four parents who made it possible for all of us in so many respects 
to have not only the educations that we've had, but the experiences and who instilled in us uh, collectively as D9, the responsibility to carry forward using community service and sisterhood and brotherhood and scholarship. This, these are the threads that run through all of our organizations. And I think in this moment, um, as we look out at an election that is one of the most consequential elections of our lifetime, all of the values that we share, the ones that were instilled in us um, over the years, the bonds that we share, the collective hope that we share um, are what we think of because we recognize that we have not only the opportunity, but we have the real profound obligation to ensure um, that we build a future that, that really befits the dignity of our children and grandchildren, that so many of the struggles that we have fought for, including access to the, to the single best education we can provide, um, providing as well economic opportunity for every single member of, of, of our communities and, and every single a part of our state, uh, making sure that we are ensuring that our daughters and granddaughters have the right to enjoy a reproductive freedom um, and that we are also building communities that are safe and affordable. I mean, these are many of the goals that we um, share. And we I'm excited, and I know that you must be extremely excited as well, to know that we can make this happen. We're not just on this call because we have the concern, but we're on this call because we know we have the power to make a change. And we have the power um, to, the, the power that was instilled in us and passed on to us by our ancestors, the power to make the impossible possible. That's what I'm about, is making the impossible possible. And what is so beautiful um, about our efforts tonight is we're not here um, uh, just because we are, are concerned about our own families, but we recognize that the new American dream says that we should want for other people's families exactly what we want for ours. So that's what my work has been about over the last 27 years when I started as a domestic violence prosecutor. Um, and in those 13 years that I spent in those courtrooms, I saw the suffering. I saw it up close and personal um, and recognized that there was so much more we could do to prevent our families from suffering. That's what we continue to do together. Um, and, and I'm excited that going forward as a United States Senator will give me the opportunity to not only um, invest really in every single community across Maryland, but it also gives me the platform to speak out on issues that are of concern to Americans. The issue of reproductive freedom doesn't just affect women in Maryland. It's an issue that affects women all across the country. Women like my daughter, who's 19 in college in Georgia, recognizing that for so many of our daughters and granddaughters, nieces and goddaughters, you may have to decide where to live in the country based on where you will have freedom whether that's Georgia's, Georgia or Texas or Florida, it's not good enough to us uh, just to enjoy the freedoms here in Maryland. We want that to be ca the case for women all over our country. Um, the epidemic of gun violence. You know, I met a young man yesterday. Uh, we went over to the University of Maryland Eastern Shore and I was so moved by a young man who first of all has the courage to continue his education uh, after not only being shot himself last year, but he revealed to me that his brother had been murdered. Um, he was wearing his necklace around his neck, but he was determined to go forward, had the courage and the vision and, and the brilliance to continue his education. And guess what? He wanted to know what in the world we intend to do. Those of us who have the power to change the reality for him and so many other American children who recognize that the number one way they will die in this country is by gun violence. That's the number one killer of children. So these are the, it's some of the issues when we think about economic opportunity. You know, it's interesting to me because I think about, we think about the March on Washington and it's not lost on me that at the time of the March on Washington, uh, people came from all across our country and their request, they are petitioning the government for two things, jobs and freedom. And you know what, it hasn't changed that the urgency that we feel right now in this moment um, is still about the same, about the same concerns jobs and economic opportunity, growing opportunity and our freedom. And that's what this election allows us to, to fight for once again. And to those who like me are asking, why is it that we keep fighting for the same, over the same fights over and over again? Um, I've continued to say, you know what? It was Coretta Scott King who reminded us that freedom is never really won. That we have to fight it and win it in every generation. And guess what y'all, this is our leg of the race. 
It is our leg of the race. And what we know is that when we fight it together, we're going to win. We're going to win big on November 5th um, in Maryland, but I can't win unless you help me. This is a race that I don't, I don't enter alone. Um, it means that every single one of us in this, and guess what? If these don't come again, they don't come about easily. These are, are generational fights that we have to win. And this one doesn't come back so often or so easily. So we have to lean in right now. And I thank all of you for lending me um, your energy and your efforts to help us get across that line on November 5th. We're going to cross it together and bring everyone we know. So I'm going to ask you when you get off this call, because we can do this. If just D9 shows up and, and, and rallies all the people we know, that's going to be the critical difference uh, for us to win on November 5th is making sure that we check in with everyone we know, your brothers, sisters, cousins, mom, dad, all the relatives and colleagues and church members, and just make sure that people are voting and that they vote early. This is going to be really important, not just for me, but we're going to make sure that we also elect Vice President Kamala Harris as the president of the United States. And as Joy would say, let that sink in. You know, that in this election, which is my daughter's first election, the first time she's eligible to vote, I just thank God to live at a time where my daughter is going to be voting for me and she's going to be voting for Kamala Harris for president of the United States. And we're going to make all of that happen. And then we're going to continue to address the issues that are of concern to communities all over our state and all over our country. So again, to all of you, um, I thank you so much for all the love. I tell you, it's nothing like it. I have gone all over the state and I have been able to express, be able to expect the embrace, the support, the encouragement, the prayers of my brothers and sisters in D9. And I feel the love and I want you to know that I love you back. And the solemn promise that I make to you is that every time they see me in that Senate, they will see you and see your families as well. That I certainly don't go there just on my own, um, but I'm gonna take with me you and people all over our state who are gonna be counting on me to speak courageously and truthfully um, about the struggles of all of our communities who expect me to bring about solutions uh, to age old problems. And that is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna work with the team we have here in Maryland, work with our governor, Wes Moore, work with, um, with our, the chair of our legislative black caucus, Janelle Wilkins, who I know I saw on here. I see Nicole Williams, I see um, uh, Nick Charles. I see so many of my friends, Senator Antonio Hayes. There's so many who are on this call, my brother Calvin Ball. It's, I'm gonna be working with all of these incredible uh, electeds across the state uh, as a part of Team Maryland. And y'all, we're gonna have a glorious time. So um, I thank you, I'm gonna hand this back um, over to, is it, did I, do I hand this back over to Sora Dukes um, or who do I hand it back? But thank you all so much again, y'all, let's do it. Let's do it. So, so before you do that, if, if you all send up your um, reactions and emojis, let's, let's show some love for our D9 sister, Angela also Brooks. And I'm going to tell you what's been said in the chat. We got you, Angela. Our vote is our hope. Make the impossible possible. All in for also Brooks. We have your back and your front. We support you and Kamala. Uh, bold, courageous, and unflinching. Uh, D9 is armed and ready for you. Black women lead. We're going to have a blue wave in 2024. Yes, yes. You will win by God's grace. Let's go. Our vote counts. I'm fighting with you and for you and for us. And here's what I say. I don't know about you all, but I had parents that when you walked in the in the living room, they had a picture of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and Barack Obama. I cannot wait to add Angela Also Brooks and Kamala Harris to those pictures that my parents are so proud of what they were able to witness during their lifetime. So uh, we all know it. Uh, you're going to be our cousin, our sister, our auntie, uh, our friend, and you and you know that. So. Everyone is sending you love in the chat, and I just want you to know that. And the great thing about all of this is that they are going to sign up to continue to do the work that you've already charged us to do, uh, to vote, to
to take people to, to vote with us, to be poll watchers, to be organizers, to canvas, to make telephone calls. So the one thing we know is that you can count on the D9. I, oh, I thank you so much. To God be the glory for the great thing he's about to do. Thank you so much, everybody. Much love to all of y'all. Listen, let's go win. I'm going to see you in the victory lane. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. So we're, we have another guest who's going to come on. Uh, I'm, I'm checking my uh, text messages because that's the way we're communicating tonight. And uh, before we, uh, before I do that, and she, and she's already texted me and said, not yet, uh, but coming. The one thing that I do want to do, and I'm going to ask them if they'll come uh, on screen just for a moment. I want to introduce you all to Karen Darks, who is the executive director of the Maryland Democratic Party. So Karen, you have to come on, uh, turn your camera on. If you can't, I, I can't, uh, there you are. <laughs> And I believe you have on your also Brooke shirt. Am I correct? Absolutely. I so do. Do you want to say a few words, Karen? I should be used to Dr. Deuce put me on the spot by now. Um, <laughs> I just want to say thank you all for joining this call. And thank you all for showing up for our future Senator Angela also Brooks. Um, you know, here at the MDP, we felt like it was very, very important to do this call and not take any of our electorate for granted and most importantly the black electorate and we know what the power of these organizations are so really really thank you all so much for getting on this call you could be anywhere at this time but you're here with us we hope that you'll stay on and listen to the rest of our program you'll think you will all be dazzled by our panel and by the rest of our special guests and please 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 do join us on sunday for our Black Marylanders for Kamala and Angela call as well. So thank you. Thank you. And Karen, I'm going to um, ask permission if we can go back to our panelists for up. Oh, we don't have to. So there's someone who has come on the screen who needs no introduction, but we're going to do it anyways. He is the best governor in the entire United States of America. And how do I know that? One is because I get the opportunity to work with him, but more importantly, we hear that from everyone across these United States. I, I know that you've been in Pennsylvania, you've been in Texas, you've been in California, and anyone and everyone we know calls us and says, can we have your governor? And the answer is absolutely not that he belongs to us. So listen, as we're here, we're here as a D9 family and we have a D9 governor. Please welcome the governor of the state of Maryland, the Honorable Wes Moore. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? What's going on? Dr. Dukes, Dr. Dukes, our leader, our leader. Thank you and God bless you. And, and thank you for all of your leadership. And listen, y'all talk about y'all talk about the whole country being jealous. The whole country is jealous that we got a that we got a Delta as our vice chair who's leading the charge. And this is, I'm telling you, the key to secret weapon to this whole thing is the fact that we have such a fired up, such a fired up party right now. And Dr. Dukes, you're doing such an amazing job of just completely leading this charge. And so we love you and we are grateful for you. We love you. We love you. And what's going on, D9 family? Uh, I am. I am beyond excited to have a chance to just to say uh, say a quick hello and to say a quick thank you. Because if there is one thing that I'm very clear about, if there's one thing I'm very clear about, is that the road to Washington, it runs through the D9. The road to the White House, the road to the Senate seat, it runs through the D9. And do you know how I know that? Because the road to government house in Annapolis it ran through the D9 because this is the crew right now that moves mountains. And I know that because this is a crew that so early was right there, that was knocking on doors, that was out there making phone calls, 
that was out there gathering people and hosting people and letting people know that we have such a unique opportunity to do something different and to do something special. And let me tell y'all, we're here again. We're here in this moment because now we are 32 days in a wake up from having an opportunity to once again do something special, to do something unique. And I wanna be clear that it's not about making history. That's not what these elections are about. Elections are not about the fact that we can have, you know, the first D9 governor in the history of this country or have a have a have a have a senator who is going to be the first black woman that Maryland has ever elected to the US senator or to have a president of the United States, my soror, who can be the first black woman ever to be elected president of the United States. We know that and we love it. And that's not the assignment. The reason that we are going to make Kamala Harris the next president of the United States is because she is brilliant and she's the best. The reason we are going to make Angela also Brooks the next senator for the state of Maryland is because she is brilliant and because she's the best and because we care about our future and we're going to protect it. We're going to make sure we have the right people in the right seats who actually believe in a bigger vision for who, vision for who we are and for what it is we want to get done. But that runs through us. That runs through the D9. And I know my guy, I know he's on here somewhere, my guy Lamont, my, my man Lamont Raleigh, one nine, who is out here and hasn't slept for God knows how many months now at this point, because that's how my man just moves in one speed and that's go. And that's my man. But one thing I know a conversation that we had early on in this phase is that when we're in these moments like this, you can feel the weight. You can feel the weight of the past who's looking at us and asking us, are we honoring the assignment? That we can feel the weight of future generations who are looking at us and asking us, do we understand the assignment? That we can feel the pressure and to know that just like the beautiful jewels that we are, we don't crack under pressure. We only shine. This election will be won by us. Our ability to outwork. Our ability to go out and inspire people to come to the polls. Our, our ability to go out and make sure that no one votes alone. Our ability to do the work. And I'm telling you right now, we have the candidates. We have the general, Lamont. We have the mission. We have the focus. We have the jewels. It's our time. For now, we got 32 days left. And we're going to leave it all in the field, y'all. We're going to leave it all in the field because when we do what we need to do, we will be there in January watching the swearing in of Senator Alsobrooks and President Harris. And then it'll literally everyone will know that we understood the assignment. Maryland tough, Baltimore strong. Let's go get this done and let's leave nothing to question. Leave it all in the field and know that we're going to go earn this victory. Nothing is given. Everything is earned. So I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I'm excited to see y'all out there. And we're going to do this. And I'm telling you, generations from now are going to pay attention and see that y'all did the damn thing. So God bless y'all. Let's go get it done. Let's show some love to the governor. It's all in the chat. I can see it. We love you back. Yes, Governor Moore, Hello, yes, sir. So I uh, love you and the First Lady. So, uh-oh, somebody put in there 06. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> 06 to the bras. That's and, right. Uh, you, if you had a chance to look at the chat, you can see that it's pouring, love is pouring from everyone, and we all understand the assignment. And not only do we understand it, but we're going to lean in and get the assignment done. Yes. Amen. God bless you, Dr. Dukes. We love you. We love you. We love you. And God we'll follow bless you, you anywhere. Thank you for your leadership. And uh, we all look forward to having a good time on November 5th. Woo! Listen. And I'm going to sleep in on the 6th, just so you know, <laughs> Governor. <laughs> but It'll be just you. like the day after we crossed. Thanks. All you do is sleep the whole next day. <laughs> so thank you and and uh, the last message i want to send to you 
Courtney says the assignment will be completed with honor. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you for joining us, Governor. You're free to stay on if you'd like, but we're going to move into our panel. Take care. Bye-bye. And then I'd like to ask our panelists if you would come back on. Thank you so much. And thank you for your patience as we waited for County Executive also Brooks and, and Governor Westmore. So now we're gonna ask like some really serious questions. I think that uh, when we, uh, when we uh, uh, stopped before, Delegate Wilkins, you were answering a question uh, with regard to uh, Divine Nine organizations and why it's so important to engage in social actions within our communities. And the one thing that we do know is that we don't speak for our, we are all here in our personal capacities. That's why we only talk about the colors we wear as, as opposed to the organizations to which they belong. So, so Delegate Wilkins, I know I cut you off and thank you so much for your graciousness, but if you'd like to come back in and finish answering the question. I had just enough time to, to cover it, so it all worked out. I'll turn it over to my other colleagues and just wanted to recognize my amazing members of Legislative Black Caucus of Maryland that are also on here and will be speaking shortly. Delegate Scott Phillips, Senator Hayes, Delegate Nicole Williams, and Senator Nick Charles. We are deep in the legislature in terms of um, the Divine Nine, and I'm excited to hear the comments that um, my colleagues have to share as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Senator Hayes, we're going to come to you next. Social action. Absolutely. Good evening, Dr. Dukes to the Maryland Democratic Party and all of our colleagues. Special shout out to those advocators of Fire New Pie who have joined us this evening. Um, as, as our chair said, we're blessed in Maryland um, with the representation that we have. And, and so, you know, my message is like really let's take advantage of the privilege that we have as we go to organizations like National Black Caucus of State Legislators and we talk to our colleagues in southern states where their legislatures are not controlled by uh, the Democratic Party, but they are actively working to create barriers to pre prevent us from voting. Here in Maryland, we have early vote. We have vote by mail. We have all of the tools that we need to participate. And so um, I, I hope that we leave today with the, the the history and the culture that we share so deeply um, in the Divine Nine, ex and, and including our brothers and sisters in the Masonic Order um, to make sure that we get the word out and we participate in this most powerful election. As the governor said, uh, the road to DC leads through Maryland. Um, typically during a presidential race, we're not really in the spotlight but the, the balance of the U.S. Senate depends on us. And so hopefully um, we stand up and participate. Thank you so much, Dr. Duke. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you know, we all belong to so many organizations out there. So actually our work uh, does not um, begin and end with the Divine Nine. And I'm so glad you said that, Senator Hayes, because what it really means is that we have a wide swath and a, and a wide path to cover throughout um, these 24 jurisdictions in the state of Maryland. So Mr. Johnson, come in and come on, come on off mute and talk to us about um, what does it mean to activate? What does that feel like for you? I think in terms of activation, it means to create a movement and a spark of innovation. I think oftentimes we sit in our own cells and we don't always make movement. But we have a unique gift right now. We have a unique time for us to not only mobilize, but strategize and how to make sure that this is a dynastic approach, right? This, this, this motivation lasts over a hundred years. We have a lot of momentum right now, but the key is to keep the momentum going, keep the drives going and make sure that our voice is not only heard, but respected in our communities. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Diana. What does it what does it look like and feel like to get people excited in our communities? It's exciting. I mean, we talk about this being a historic 
election, but it's so much more than that. There's so much at stake right now. And the the big piece about activating our members is educating our members. It's making sure that folks know not just who the candidates are, but what's on the ballot, making sure that we are fully engaged and understand our local and national policies, because it doesn't just affect one of us, it affects all of us. So making sure that we are bringing home that message you know, um, someone mentioned earlier on the panel that they talk to their parents, they talk to their neighbors, they are making sure that the communication doesn't just stay in one place, that it goes all across the board to make sure that we are getting across the finish line so that we can take that uh, necessary break on November 6th and then be prepared to go again for the next election because it doesn't stop. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to go to uh, Delegate Scott Phillips next. So can you share your experience with your first political campaign where you were actively involved? What lessons did you learn that could help inspire others to participate more actively today? Well, Dr. Dukes, thank you for that. I was uh, reflecting on that. And I participated in elections since I was about 20 years old um, as a student in undergrad. Uh, but the election that really stuck out to me and a lot of lessons learned was electing the first elected African-American mayor in Baltimore City, which was Kurt Smoke, another member of the Divine Nine. And we had this thing that we call Brothers for the Brother. It was the opportunity for young guys to really get involved in the political process. And I remember that so well, because we talk about having an impact. It was all the members of the Divine Nine. It was 100 Black men. It was Black professional men. It was the Nation of Islam. But that galvanized us, and we had an impact. And, and I tell you, it was so exciting for me that that's why I'm still involved with this stuff today. Um, the, 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 the proof, though, is in the pudding. And I, I had this saying that for whom much is given, much is required. And as members of the Divine Nine, we are fortunate. We're really, really blessed. And I don't know that we always um, acknowledge and appreciate that. But for those blessings, there is a responsibility. And so this isn't just about getting people out. It's about getting people to understand that we have a inherent responsibility. All of our organizations, we took an oath. We took an oath to serve. We took an oath to lead. We took an oath to tutor, to mentor. So in my mind, this is all part of what we're all about anyway. Thank you. Thank you for that. So Jackie Mims Levy, I'm going to ask you the same question and now a little differently, but how do you, how do you maintain um, your commitment to social action and, and activation? I maintain my commitment every day. I must say it, it starts with prayer. And that's how I maintain my commitment. But I have to zero back into how I got into this space. And it happened with Lamont Riley. So I was just a, just a new young lady in this space. And I learned how to play the good game of follow the good leader. And that leader promised to leave no one behind. That's where I started. As many of you started so young, but I started in that space. And I followed the good game of follow the leader with our governor, Wes Moore, with Lamont Riley sharing the fact that he will do the things that he shared he would do. And I just said to Lamont Riley, is he angelic? And he said, come on the Zoom and you'll see if he's angelic. And after the Zoom, he said, what do you think? I said, yes, he's angelic. And that's where I started pressing my way to help those and mobilize those that are in a space for the good and the greater good of us as a people. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'm going to go to uh, Delegate Williams. And as we think about the, the two candidates that we certainly want to support, um, what, what are the three things that you would tell 
um, those um, both in and outside of your circle as you're as you're dealing with voter education and voter mobilization. What should they know about Angela also Brooks? Yes, absolutely. And thank you, Dr. Dukes. And hello to all of my colleagues on this Zoom today. Uh, what they should know about Angela Also Brooks, number one, uh, my sore Angela Also Brooks is a fighter. Um, and I know that if elected to the United States Senate, she will fight for um, all of the values that we believe in. And I've seen it firsthand. I saw it when she served as my state's attorney here in Prince George's County. I've seen it firsthand as now she is serving as my county executive here in Prince George's County. She led our county through the pandemic, um, which I don't think that there is any textbook or any campaign that could have ever prepared any elected official to be a leader during that crucial time in our history, in our country. And she led with grace, she led with perseverance, um, and she led with strength. And she was really the comfort that we had as a county during that time to tell us that it's going to be okay. And I took comfort, and I think our entire community took comfort during that time because of her leadership. And so it is without any question for me personally um, that I know she'll make a great United States Senator because I have seen her lead in the good times and in the bad times. And that is how you know the testament of a person. Um, and so I, I'm excited to support her. Uh, and, and that's really why I'm supporting her for the United States Senate. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I'm going to go to my good brother. Now, uh, I call him my little brother. Um, and he is not really, but he saw my son through. And I really appreciated that. So look, Senator Nick Charles, when you think about Kamala Harris, can you talk about what you believe that she will bring to the role of president that maybe no one else has ever done? Listen, thank you so much, Dr. Dukes. Uh, listen, I appreciate you, your leadership and everything that you're doing. And that's what uh, Kamala Harris is bringing, her leadership, her poise, uh, her energy, uh, everything that she stands for, what they have done uh, under the Biden administration. Uh, it has been uh, phenomenal uh, for the impact that it's having on our country. And when Kamala Harris gets in there, standing up for uh, little girls like my daughter. Uh, when my daughter wakes up, will be able to wake up in the morning the day after the election and know that she too can one day become the president of the United States of America. That says so much to our, our younger generation. Uh, it says so much to everyone on this call that if you want to do something, you put your mind to it and you can get it accomplished. And, and those are the types of stories that transcend and make a lot of us get energized and and focused on elections like this. Uh, same thing with, with Angela. That's why we're all pushing. And, and we're fired up. Uh, next week, we're, uh, we're getting on a bus and going up to Pennsylvania, to Harrisburg, and knock on some doors. Uh, we're getting some corner waves ready. If y'all ready to get put your tennis shoes on, come out 7 o'clock in the morning, get energized. Let's go out here and, uh, and, and, and get all of your organizations as well. I'm a proud member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, right out of the University of District of Columbia chapter, OG. Uh, but listen, you know, wherever you are, wherever chapter you crossed and whatever organization you're in, tap into your organization and, and mobilize folks. If you don't have yard signs, get you some yard signs, put them in front of your house. Listen, I, I, I drop yard signs for uh, the, the Harris Walls campaign and for uh, Angela's campaign in front of my house, my mom's house and my dad's house. And all of their neighbors are now hitting me up and my neighbors saying, where the rest of the signs at? We need some. And so that's the type of, we got to get folks energized and excited. And I know I'm excited. And uh, we, we it, it's what, what, 33 days away? It's our time. We cannot rest on our laurels. We really got to get out there, get motivated and knock this thing out the park. Well, thank you for that. Look, I wish you all could take a bus up to my little hometown in Pennsylvania, Johnstown. You know, somebody was there last week. My sister called me and she said, look, I need signs from Maryland. She said, I need some shirts. You know, they don't even sell.
things that we can get down here very easily when we think about our own, um, certainly local state candidate. And then when you think about the, uh, the, the presidency. So I went and purchased everything I could. I told her to uh, go out there with the sign protesting in front of the Johnstown War Memorial because somebody was there that we certainly are not voting for. Now, I probably said something I shouldn't say, but it is what it is. I have the mic. Uh, Listen, this is the Democratic Party. We stand for Democratic candidates. So there is no, no uh, misconception. We're fighting for our people to get into office because they're going to fight for the issues that benefit all of us, everybody, even them. They don't even realize that the issues we're fighting for benefit them as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I want to have my last question with, with County Executive Ball. We've known each other for, for some time and watched your leadership from afar. And as you think, thought about your own campaign, why was it important for you to run for County Executive? And how do you use that? And how would you even give advice around how that's used by others who are um, certainly uh, holding political office, but most importantly for Angela also Brooks and Kamala Harris. Well, thank you so much for the question, Dr. Dukes. And let me just first say in, in my other life, I'm an educator, my doctorate's in education with a focus on community colleges. And while we are so blessed to have Dr. Dukes as a star in the Democratic Party, she is a star in the higher ed world too, very well respected. Uh, as an educator, as a father, I knew that uh, going from the county council, I could do more. I could do more for our people. And I wanted to ensure that we had leadership at the county executive spot that, but for who was going to be there, uh, some people's lives might not turn out all right. We all have different neighbors, different districts where, they're going to be okay with any kind of uh, democratic leadership or someone uh, being in that role. Then we know those people who are at the crossroads of their lives. And oftentimes, and I'm so glad people are on tonight, we don't recognize the magic in a moment until it's a memory. And I knew that with this opportunity, I could meet that moment. And because of uh, my brothers and sisters from the Divine Nine and so many others, we made history. I became the first Black county executive in Howard County. We brought in an opportunity for the first Black sheriff, the first Black state's attorney. We turned the entire tide. And in fact, in Howard County, after uh, my election in 2018, across our federal, state, and local offices, we had one Republican left in all of Howard County standing. That is a message that we sent to future generations. And we can do that again if we are united. We can meet this moment. We will meet this moment. And generations from now, when people ask us and they see President Kamala Harris and they see Senator Alsa Brooks and they ask, where were you? And what did you do? This is your opportunity to be able to have a story that makes you proud, that makes your children, your grandchildren, all your neighbors, those whose lives will be publicly and positively impacted because of the work that we do for just 33 more days, family. We got this. Well, you know, what I'd like to say is that all of you have met the moment. Uh, uh, many of you are elected officials. Some are not, but what you are is you're active in your communities. And that's really what's important here. And uh, that's the message that we want to convey to all of our D9 brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter the color we wear. What matters is that we're on the same page with the same mission. And we understand that this, this is our moment. And we cannot let it pass. We were uh, uh, talking earlier today, and I think it was actually uh, County Executive also, Brooks, talking about John Lewis and how at the age of 22, he decided who he was going to be and what he was going to advocate for, and he never strayed away from that. Uh, after having almost been killed on the, on the Pettus Bridge, so um, 
we know what we can do. We know the power that we have on this call uh, with all of, I think we have more than uh, 400. Uh, we had more than 400 individuals actually sign up. I think that we have close to 200 who are with us tonight, but we all know the members of our organizations. We know our family members, our friends, and uh, how we get this message out. Now, we have a few questions. One of them is a little serious. So, Paul Kerner, I'm, I, we have your question, and we're going to get someone to you to give you the answer. He really uh, wanted to ask a question about what specific policies or initiatives would um, the county executive propose in her new role that she'll have uh, to increase access to capital, mentorship, and long-term sustainability for minority-owned and women-owned businesses? He gives us his email address and his phone number. So, Paul, please know that we will get back to you with that response. We'll actually have someone reach out to you from the campaign. So thank you for that. We have, uh, he also tells us that he's 24 years old, graduated from UMES and Cross Alpha Mu chapter. So absolutely, thank you, Paul. Uh, we have someone who asked about lawn signs. So um, I think that that belongs to us in the Democratic Party. Uh, we do know that we have been giving um, signs to our uh, 24 uh, Democratic Central Committees. So please reach out in the county where you live to the local Democratic Central Committee. They should be able to help you. If they can't believe you, me, they will call us and uh, we will make sure that we get out uh, signs to them. And then- And they, Dr. Dukes, we have a Central Committee member on, on with us, Diana Emerson, that can probably okay. speak to what Baltimore City is doing. Thank you, Diana. Sure. So Baltimore City has a link on the BaltimoreCityDems.org website where you can order a sign and we will deliver it to you personally. So if you are in uh, Legislative District 43A, I will be the one to actually personally stick it in your yard or wherever you would like that sign to be. But you can um, just give us your information and we will deliver a sign directly to you. Absolutely. And, the, the you know, we know that there'll be a lot of uh, traveling across the state over the course of these next several days. We know that um, people are standing on corners, uh, holding signs, uh, the candidates that they support. And what we know is that we have to win the Senate uh, because the, 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 the blue wave comes through Maryland. And we have to win those three vacancies in the House. So don't forget about that as we think about Johnny Olszewski, April Delaney, and Sarah Elfred. That will be just as important to us. I will also say that um, Lisa asked for complete information about the bus trip to Harrisburg. Uh, so Senator Charles, is there a number or an email address that we can provide if folks are interested in um, supporting uh, this, this movement in Harrisburg? And you're on mute. My campaign visit at friends for Nick Charles dot com. I am at friends for the number four Charles dot com. And so I will get you all the information that you're looking for. If you put it, if you can put it in the um, the the panelist chat that we have, then we will make sure that we put it in the chat for all of uh, our D nine brothers and sisters who've joined us. Because I think you said friends for Nick Charles, but I you yep. you got a little garbled. Okay, so I think we have that, and they they she has it info at friends for Nick Charles dot com. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think that those were all the questions that we had um, at, at this moment. We do want to show uh, another video as we, and look, what I always say, ending a little early is better than ending late. Don't you all think that as well? So we just really want to thank you all for coming on with us. We have work to do and we're all committed to doing it please go to the chat. There are links there where you can sign up. 
I think that uh, Lamont, you're going to come back on and uh, uh, get us all revved up again about the work that needs to be done. But I do want to thank our colleagues who uh, joined us in this short, brief panel. Thank you again, not just for your responses, but for all that you're doing for the residents of the state of Maryland. And thank you for your commitment to D9. And uh, so you can feel free to go off screen. I'm going to have uh, Lamont come back on. And Lamont, you're going to talk to us a little bit more about revving us up for what is coming next. That would be Lamont Riley, not that other Lamont. <laughs> so Deja, are you gonna do the video again? Yes, I'm about to share that while Lamont gets um. Okay, on. thank you. So as you can see, they were singing, having a good time on their way to the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. So we took this from a, a cell phone and certainly tried to make it so we could show it to you all tonight, but it really is just an indication. And someone said, sing it, Phyllis and Jocelyn. So we just wanted to make sure that you could see that work is going on every day. Uh, Lamont has just been a, a giant in terms of his commitment to um, ensuring that uh, our candidates are elected across the state of Maryland. And Lamont, we appreciate you and we love you too. We love you too. So Lamont, you wanna say anything else about get out the vote? Sure, um, well, there have been some great speakers here and they've given some great messages. Again, this election is not just about a seat in the Senate, it's about healthcare, it's about elders, education for our children, economic opportunities for our communities and justice uh, for future generations. Um, the stakes couldn't be higher. I see dead people. And at this time, I wanna just say to you all that Angela Also Brooks message is unmatched. Do you know why? Because they not like us. What's up with these Jabroni air? Trying to see Compton. The industry can hate me. Marlon, the mama. How many options you really got? I mean, it's too many options. I'm finna pass on this body. I'm John Stockton. Beat your not the Bible of God watching. Sometimes you gotta pop out and show. Certified boogie man, I'm the one that up to score with him. Walking down whole time, I know he got some in him. Pull on him, extort, bully the flow on him. Say Drake, I hear you like I'm young. You better not ever go to cell block one. To any that talk to him and they in love, just make sure you hide your little sister from him. They tell me Chubb's the only one that get your hand me downs. And party at the party playing with his nose now. And Baka got a weird case, why is he around? Certified lover boy, certified pedophiles. Wop, 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 wop. That fuck him up. Wop, wop, wop. I'ma do my stuff. Why you trolling like a? Ain't you tired? Trying to strike a chord, and it's probably a minor. They not like us. 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 You think the bay gon' let you disrespect pop? I think that Oakland show gon' be your last stop. They cold foul. I don't know why you still pretending. 
What is the owl? Bird, Lucas, and Bird. Go. The audience not dumb. Shape the stories how you want. Hey, Drake, they're not slow. Rabbit hole is still deep. I can go further, I promise. Ain't there some be rest That's for bitching. You Malibu most wanted. Ain't no law boy. You ball boy. Fish get raid or something. Since 2009, I had this jumping. You to get a wedgie. Be flipped over your boxes. Or over your foe. The other, the other option. Better straighten they posture. Got famous all up in content. Might write this with a doctor. Tell a pop star quit hiding. A caption won't action. No accident. I'm hands on. He around. Get polished. Don't rain grow while he was in jail. That's conniving. Then get his face tatted like a bitch apologizing. I'm glad D Rose came home. Y'all didn't deserve him neither. From Alonja down to Central. Better not speak on Serena. And your homeboy needs subpoena. That predator moving flocks. That name gotta be registered and placed on neighborhood watch. I lean on you niggas like another line of walk. Yeah, it's all eyes on me and I'ma send it up the pot. Ay, put the roll label on me. I'ma get them dropped. Ay, tweet. Music and I won't pass the ox. Ay, how many stocks do I really have in stock? Ay, one, two, three, four, five, plus five. Ay, devil is a lie. He a 69 god. Ay, freaky ass. Need to stay the ass inside. Ay, roll that ass up like a fresh pack of Zah. Ay, city is back up. It's a must. We outside. Hi, right, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. They not like us because when we fight, we win. 33 more days to go. Yay to the D9. Thank you all so very much. Have a great night. Let's do this thing.